in the house of the Lord. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Why? Because the Lord is good. God's mercies are everlasting. And his truth endures until all generations. Can we give our God another hand clap of praise in his house on today? Well, good morning, everybody. If this is your first time worshiping with us, I'm Reverend Ken Anderson. I'm the senior pastor at Dale and Lee Haven United Methodist Churches in Middletown and towns in Delaware. And I want to welcome all of you to Dale and Lee Haven's combined Sunday morning worship service on this Sunday. September the 20, September the 4th, 2022. I'm trying to get to September 24th. The 14th day after Pentecost. And the first Sunday of the month, which means this is Communion Sunday on today. Amen. We want to welcome all of you that are watching this live on Facebook. All of you that are listening now to the conference call line. All of you that will be watching this worship service later on YouTube. And those of you who on this Labor Day weekend still made your way to the house of the Lord. And you're here in person at Dale United Methodist Church. Just a few minutes ago, we commenced our, before we commenced our worship service, we celebrated the confirmation of one of our young ladies here at Dale, Miss Cielo Robinson. Amen who was confirmed, amen, as she became a professing member of the United Methodist Church at the age of 18 and a local church member here at, Des, here at Dale. CLO will continue her spiritual journey. This is just the beginning, along with the rest of us as we grow into true disciples of Christ, amen. So. We shall continue to pray for CLO and the entire Robinson family, her parents, Toy and Norris, who have persevered and brought CLO to the place where she is today, Amen. a beautiful 18-year-old Christian woman Amen. on today. Can we give CLO another round of applause? Amen. Amen. Also this morning, because it is First Sunday, we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion immediately after the sermon. So those of you on the conference call line or who are watching this on Facebook or YouTube, if you don't have one of our pre-packaged communion cups, this would be a good time to grab a cracker or a piece of bread and something as close to Welch's grape juice that you can find. And just before we celebrate communion, I will consecrate those elements so that we all might be able to share in communion together. Is that all right? Yes. In today's sermon, we'll be sharing part two of truth to ensure your victory in 2022. We'll be teaching about one of the most important truths in the word of God, the blood covenant. Amen. The blood covenant, amen. So amen. appropriate for this communion Sunday. For if you understand the significance of the blood covenant for those of you that know the Lord, and you've qualified yourself to be a part of that covenant, no matter what you might have to go through in this life, no matter what may come your way, you will have the assurance and confidence to know that God is in the midst of that. Amen. That God is there. Yes. And that your God is able uh -huh. to do yes. exceedingly and abundantly above yes, all that you could ever ask or thank. You believe that? Say amen. amen. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But at this time, I want to turn the furtherance of this worship service over to our fine associate pastor, Reverend Diane Wood. Shout amen, amen. as she comes at this time. Praise the Lord. How great is our God this morning. 
Thank you, Lord, for a brand new day. Bringing us through our night safely and allowing us to get here this morning so that we can worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 So let's talk to God for a few minutes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless your holy name this morning. For you are God alone, and there is none like you, O God. God, we come before your presence with thankful hearts this morning. We thank you for sending your Holy Spirit this morning, early this morning, dear Lord, to encamp right here in this church building. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness and for your grace. We thank you, Father God, for all that you are in our lives and all that you do, taking nothing for granted. Granted, or trying not to take anything for granted, oh God. But God, we're just going to bless your holy name today. And we're going to worship you and honor you and exalt your holy name. We thank you for all that you are. And Lord, we invite you still into this worship service. And just come in and touch each and every individual that is here. The ones that wanted to be here and could not. Lord, we just ask that you surround us all with your might, with your power, with your grace, with your mercy. And Lord, just continue to pour into us as your children, dear Lord. We bless you on this day and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask Dr. Devana to come forward with our greeting this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Bless his holy name. Good morning. Good morning. Let's praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Congratulations again to Cielo. Cielo. We all want to be able to live in grace and peace. That was such a beautiful ceremony this morning. And it reminds me of what our young people deal with today. You know, they're dealing with a lot. And if they can come into the presence of the Lord, that's a big help. That's the help that you need. That's the help that you need. And, and you know, on, on my heart this morning, I want to ask the congregation if we can pray for our children and the young people, pray for their health their safety, their peace of mind. Let's pray that they will be free of fear, of hurt and anger, that they can have peace and grace in their lives. That God will continue to protect them, to keep them safe, to protect our campuses, to protect our schools, to protect their comings and their goings, to protect them as they drive in their vehicles, to protect, I talked to a woman yesterday who has a teenager who's just learning how to drive and she's afraid. So parents, again, protecting our parents as they raise our children today, to keep our parents free from fear, to know that God is our protector and that we keep our children safe. And so I just ask and remind all of us, if we can pray, please pray for our children and our youth and to protect them and to give them God's grace and peace. Right, Cielo? We love you. We love our children. Keep them safe. And thank you in advance, Lord, for hearing our prayer and protecting our children, our families, and the families of our congregation. Amen. 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 We thank Dr. Devana for that wonderful greeting. She always gives us some food for thought, some words of inspiration, some encouragement, and we need that. We need that. Do we have any visitors in our, in our midst today? Hallelujah. Any visitor? Would you like to stand and give us your name? Yes. Tell us a little bit. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is my friend, the band, and Joyce. We are brother Mr. David Kane's neighbor. Amen. He's only encouraging us. Yes. Dropping the word off because we know our darling from a teenager, young teenager on us, and we want to be here to just show our support for her. Amen. 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 <laughs> 
Amen. 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 Well, we thank you for coming to Dale this morning to worship with us. I remember you ladies from the tent at Stravaganza. So they hung out with us before. So y'all keep hanging out with us. It is good to see visitors in the house of the Lord and who are comfortable with coming into our midst to worship God our Father. Amen. Amen. If there is anyone in need of food, please contact Sister Marguerite Donas at area code 302-508-9207. Again, anyone in need of food, or if you know anyone who's in need of food, please contact Sister Marguerite at 302-508-9207. Youth Sunday School will meet today at 1230. The topic of discussion will be burnt out. Faith call for perseverance. Any youth interested in joining this ministry, please contact myself, Associate Pastor Diane Wood, at area code 215-313-8087. The Monday noonday hour of prayer meets every Monday at 12 p.m. Yeah. And this ministry is led by Minister David Kane. If you have a prayer request that you would like presented during tomorrow's hour of prayer, please contact uh, Minister Kane through email, mm -hmm. Jesus, my hero, mm -hmm. 3927 at gmail.com. Yeah. Again, that's Jesus, my hero. 3927 at gmail.com. If you desire to listen in on a prayer call, you may do so by dialing 425-436-6391, access code 679-359. To attend Dale and Lee Haven United Methodist Combined Worship Service in person, Please register any time up to and including this Saturday until 5 p.m. Registration will close at 5 on Saturday or when we have reached capacity, whichever comes first. For security and safety reasons, the door of the sanctuary will be secured by 1020 a.m. We all, um, sorry, as we all participate in in-person uh, worship, we do ask that you continue wearing your mask at this time. Please keep our bereaving families in your prayers. Um, keep Sister Marguerite in your prayers as she travels back home from Puerto Rico and others who have traveled um, for various reasons. We need to lift them up in prayer. It's a busy traveling weekend uh, again this weekend. So, you know, patience yes. is a virtue. Yes. Uh, Minister King, would you come forth, please, and offer us our prayer for our congregants and our sick and shut in. And followed by Minister Kane's prayer, we will have our scripture reading by our district lay leader and the lay leader of Dale United Methodist Church, Sister Karen Jones. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Reverend Wood, for those heartfelt announcements. Um, I just like to just thank God for Dr. Devon and, and that heartfelt welcome this morning is because it's very, very important. Uh, because our youth is going to be where we want them to be one day. See, hello, we praise and thank God for you. The Robinson family want to thank all of you that are here this morning. And the reason why they want to thank you is because you all played a part in CLO coming to the Lord. If you didn't hand her something in her hand, you pray for her. You all knew because why? None of our closets are empty. We all got skeletons in our closet. But somebody prayed for you because why? They had you on their mind. And they took the time and prayed for you. 
So we praise and thank God, CLO, for you coming to the Lord. And one thing about it, I'm not going to preach because I'm going to make way for the pastor to preach, but I say to say that where it's the point in the world that we live in today, it's so easy to get on social media and invite folks over there to cook out over here or there's a dance right here and then they show up and they just start shooting. Yeah. 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 But this morning, we didn't have that. We didn't have that because why? It's because God is in control over every situation. If God is for you, who can be against you? And I praise and thank God because why? Yes, because I pray for you and we pray for you. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. And Dr. Devon, as you said, keep our use in prayer. It's so, so important especially when we got used running around stealing trash cans from the church and then a parent standing in a gap and taking up for them. That's the world that we're living in. But we have to be mindful of that. We can't give up on them. We got to continue to stay on our knees. We got to continue to pray for them. We can't turn our back against them. Because why? It's because we don't know what God has and stored for them in the name of Jesus. And as the pastor said, Brother Jimmy Blaston is en route to the hospital. Keep him in prayer. And our very own Brother Bobby Collins' grandson, uh, Pierre, uh, had to go to the hospital. You know, he has a trach. And he suffered a lapse, a relapse concerning his surgery that he had. So please keep our very own brother Pierre Collins in your prayers as well when you're remembering um, those that are in need of prayer in the name of Jesus. Those who know the power of prayer, pray with me that God will continue to be God and God all by himself. It's so good to stand here and look at all you outside, out in the congregation. That's the God that we serve. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we come back at your throne of grace this morning, O oh God, through our Lord and personal Savior, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we re-enter your courts and gates this morning, O oh God, with thanksgiving and praise. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father God, yes, because you are God and you're God all by yourself. Oh God, when our back was up against the wall, oh God, and we couldn't even go, oh God, to a loved one to ask, oh God, for help. But oh God, you stepped in. Oh God, you stepped in, whether it was a light bill to be paid, oh God, or whether it was a bag of food, oh God, you stepped in. So this morning, oh God, we yield to your sovereignty and we say thank you. We say thank you, Father God, because you are God and you are God all by yourself. Oh God, you don't need no help. Oh God, our arms is too short to entangle with you, oh God. But we bless your holy name, oh God, for who you are to us. Oh God, we thank you, oh God. Your word reminds us to stir up the gifts of God that's placed in us, oh God. And this morning, oh God, we recognize you, oh God, as being our Lord and personal Savior. Look what you've done this morning, oh God. We thank you. Oh God, we thank you. We know the angels, oh God, is shouting all over the heavens. Oh God, we know Gabriel and Michael, oh God, is standing at the gates. Oh God, look at you, oh God. Oh God, bless this family, oh God, in the name of Jesus as they go forth. Oh God, in the meanwhile, oh God, we have some folks, oh God, that's sick and shut in, that want to be here this morning, oh God. Some, oh God, is laying on their bed, oh God, listening to the conference call line, oh God. Some, oh God, is visiting on Facebook. Oh God, you know who they are, oh God, we got the little red book. Every name, every prayer concern, oh God, that has been recorded, oh God, we lay it at your throne of grace this morning. And oh God, not to mention, oh God, the fourth watch, the 3 a.m., oh God, the names are still being called out. Oh God, we recognize trouble. Oh God, there's trouble all around us. And oh God, we need you, oh God. 
Oh God, stretch out your hand to these children, oh God. Stretch out your hand to these youths, oh God. The adversary is mad, oh God, but we stand on the body of your word this morning. That, oh God, we sit in the palm of your hands and no one can snatch us out from your presence, oh God. Have your mighty own way, oh God. Dispatch, oh God, dispatch your angels, oh God, into Christiana this morning. Dispatch your angel, oh God, into encompass this morning, oh God. Somebody, oh God, needs to hear from heaven. Oh God, by your strength, we are healed, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We, 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 are, we are so jubilated in our spirit. No, oh God, one day when we see your face, when we all get to heaven, oh God, and see Jesus, Oh God, we're going to sing and we're going to shout the victory, oh God. But in the meanwhile, oh God, in this abominable year, oh God, have your way, oh God. We are expecting, we are expecting, we are expecting, oh God, but we are the children, oh God, and sheep of your pastor. Oh God, have your way, oh God. So this act of prayer, oh God, will not be done in vain. Oh God, please forgive us of all the sins, oh God, that we sinned against you. And we ask that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we promise you, oh God, at the end of this day, we'll be so careful, oh God, to give you the glory, to give you the honor, and to give you the praise. Almighty powers of Calvary, victory in Jesus' name. Let God's children say amen, amen, amen. That's right. Give him a hand clap. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift that's placed in you. Oh, God, have your way in this service, oh, God. It's showtime. It's your time. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, sister. Thank Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Bless your name, oh God. Bless your name. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Glory. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Lord. All by yourself. Ha. I will yes. be reading for your hearing Exodus mm. 24, 6 through 8, Galatians 3, 13 through 16. And Galatians 3, 29, Exodus 24, 6 through 8. Yeah. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in a basin. Mm -hmm. And half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in its audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. Mm -hmm. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord has made with you concerning all these words. Mm. Galatians 3, 16, 13 through 16. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, yes. Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disnought or added to thereto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now to Abraham and his seed, were the promise made. He said not, and to the seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. 329. And if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's mm. seed, and heirs according to the promise. Amen. The word of God for the Amen. people of God. Yes. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Minister Kane, for that heartfelt prayer. And Sister Cameron for reading the word of God this morning. We will now have our tithe and offering by our senior pastor, Reverend Ken Anderson, and followed by tithe and offering, we will have our sermonic hymn by Sister Lorraine 
Saunders. Say amen, church. Amen. Can we give the Lord another hand clap? Praise, amen, amen. As we prepare to receive our tithes and offering for this week, I refer us to a very familiar passage of scripture that many of us grew up with or have heard at one time or another. And that is Luke chapter 6, verse 38. First, a reading from the King James Version of that scripture from God's word. It reads as follows. Give and it shall be given unto you. That's right. Good measure, uh -huh. pressed down, yes. shaken uh -huh. together, yes. and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Yes. Yes. For with the same measure that you met with all, it shall be measured to you again. And once again, I found another interesting, and I believe still biblically accurate translation from the Passion Translation. Now, I'm, a, I'm a King James guy, but I'm starting to fall in love with this Passion Translation. Listen to the way it translates, and I believe accurately, Luke 6, verse 38. It says, give generously and generous gifts will be given back to you shaken down to make room for more. I, I like that right yes, there. Yes. Abundant gifts will pour out upon you with such an overwhelming measure that it will run over the top. Yes, sir. How many of you want something to run over the top in your life? Yes. Somebody needs something to run over the top. Yes, sir. The measurement of your generosity becomes the measurement of your return. Mm -hmm. Like many of you, I have been so blessed in my life at times that it was almost embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Have you been blessed sometimes you were, you, you were scared to talk about it? Because <laughs> yes, people you were, believe you were showing off uh -huh. or, you know, not telling the truth. We sang that song, thought I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. But I couldn't keep it to myself. So when God blesses you, you got to tell somebody. You got to tell somebody. And I want you to know this morning that that same God is yet able in this economy with all the craziness that is going on, God is yet able and yet willing to bless you spiritually, financially, socially, physically, emotionally, in every facet of your life. God is not up there in heaven with his hands tied behind his back. He's yet able. Yes, he Look at somebody and say, God is yet able. So as we share in our tithes and our offerings today yes. and this coming week, remember that the measurement yes. of your generosity yes. becomes the measurement of your return. Yes. And our God will multiply the seed sown. That's what it says in the word of God. That he will multiply the seed that you sow yeah. depending upon how serious you take this word. Yeah. Look at God. And based upon your seriousness uh -huh. and your faithfulness to this word, you may get 30-fold return. Woo. You may get 60-fold return. Yeah. And some uh -huh. who really are serious about uh -huh. believing this word Hallelujah. will get a hundred-fold yeah. return. Look can you say amen? amen? That's a word from the Lord for the people of God. Thank Thanks be God. to God. Yeah. Amen. For those of you in person this morning, we will not be passing on the offering plate today, but our usher, usher will place a plate near the exit for those who want to sow their seed as they exit the church today. For the rest of us, we will continue to sow our seed through Cash App 
or via the mail. If this is your first time with us this morning, or if you're not a member of Dale or Lee Haven, and the Lord has placed it on your heart to bless this ministry in a financial way, you can share your gift electronically through Cash App by contacting Sister Jane at 302-598-5516. For those of you in person at Dale, Sister Jane is back there in that beautiful uh, blue, what is that, a dress, shawl, what is, whatever it is, she's back there, amen. <laughs> <laughs> and for contributions to Lee Haven, you can reach out to Sister Cindy Royal. You can reach Sister Cindy at 302-653-7619. You can also mail your gifts, your tithes, and offerings to the following addresses. For Dale, you can mail them to Dale UMC, P.O. Box 190, Middletown, Delaware, 19709. And for Lee Haven, you can mail them to Lee Haven, UMC, 413 Blackbird Landing Road, P.O. Box 279, Townsend, Delaware, 19734. Will you join me as we pray over our tithes and offerings for this week? Lord God, we just thank you for the opportunity once to come to participate in your kingdom. Lord, there's rumors of things going on in our economy today and shortages and not having enough and the collapse of the stock market and the U.S. 10-year yield curve peaking, which means a problem in our economy. But today we acknowledge that, Lord, but we also acknowledge the reality that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We're not of this world. And part of our giving is sowing into your financial system. Our tithes, Lord, where you said that you would open up the windows of heaven. That means you have a system that is separate from this world system. You said if we would sow 10% of all of our increase into your system, that you would keep us living under an open heaven. That you would rebuke the devourer that's devouring here on earth. That you would rebuke that devourer for our sake. You even went on to say that you would be an enemy to all of our enemies and a devourer to those that would attempt to devour us. So, Lord, we're in this world and we have to do certain things because we're in it, Lord, but we acknowledge financially we are not of it. So we sow cheerfully as unto the Lord with great confidence, knowing, Lord, that you have a system that if we just trust and believe and be obedient to your system, that in spite of what may take place here on this earth, that you would bless us, that you would take care of us, that you would multiply seed sown into our portholes, that you would bless us in spite of because of who you are. So right now, we thank you in, in advance for what you've already done. We thank you in advance for what you're doing in our lives right this moment. And we thank you for our future. We thank you on credit, knowing that you're faithful. We ask all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you believe that, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. us up when we're down, the, the blood that was shed, they gave us what we have today. It was the blood that kept us through the night, amen, amen. It was the blood 
that allowed us to the Lord to bless us for what we have. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Stop and think about it. You didn't get that house on your own. You didn't get that car on your own. God blessed. He blessed us. I thank him every day. I'm like, because Lord, you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to do it. You didn't have to be by my side when I lost my child. You didn't have to be by my side when I lost my husband. You didn't have to be there on my side when I'm helping out another family member who's lost her only child. You didn't have to do it, but I thank God that you are able. God is able. And we ought to be able to give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give God some praise. He didn't have to wake you up this morning. No, he did not. He didn't have to have those cars sitting right there, but he blessed us. Look around. You see people begging on the street. That could be us, but he blessed. And we ought to be thankful, and we ought to take time. Because they said, if we don't bless him, the rocks will cry out. I don't want no rocks crying out for me. I don't want that. I want to give God the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mark 14 and 24 says, he said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which was poured out for many. We are many. We are many. Down at the cross where my Savior Glory to 
his name, precious name, oh, glory to his name, precious name, oh, Was the blood applied? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Glory. Thank you. When I think about how jacked up my heart was. Didn't put his blood in my vein. Put his blood on my heart. Because the heart is deceitful above all things. Deceitfully wicked, the Bible says. It's from the heart comes all the issues of our lives. So when Christ shed his blood and we needed to be gotten right, he put his blood on my heart. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. I don't know. The revival's already started with Sister Lorraine. Amen. She, she, she went to the she went to the choir conference thing. And I don't know what happened. Because what happens in Chicago stays in Chicago. But. She's been at a different level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. So we thank God for her. We thank God yeah. for the worship service. Thank God for the prayer. Yeah. Thank God for the greeting. Hallelujah. Thank God for the scripture. Yeah. Thank God for the worship leader. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God is moving. Yes, he is. I could tell you some things uh -huh. that I I'm not permitted the release right now. Right now. All right. <laughs> that have not going to happen. They've already happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm so excited yeah. Yeah. about how God is confirming his word in a different way among us. It's because of the blood. It's because of the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died on the cross. I don't know about you, but I know it was the blood for me. So grateful for this worship service today, and I'm moving quickly. So grateful that we are have been allowed to be in the land of the living one more time. And a day like today, that's just not something preachers say. Are you glad that you woke up this morning?
that you were clothed in your right mind. That you had, you may have an ache or pain or the author brothers might be working in certain areas, but you had a portion of your health and your strength. It's crazy to, it's crazy to take your health for granted. I thank God for every breath. There's a song, a, a secular song out there that, that goes something like, every breath I take, every step I make. And he didn't put these words in it, but every breath I take, every step I take, I'm thanking God. I'm thanking God. So I just came to say thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for giving me another chance. Thank you for giving me another opportunity. Thank you for allowing me to have one more chance to get it right. The Lord has just been so very good to us. Just been so good to us. I know everything is not perfect in our lives and you know everything hasn't worked out just the way you want it to uh -huh. that you're still a road under construction in many ways in the area of your life but in spite of that God is yet been good to you been good to us a couple of Sundays ago we started part one of this teaching truth to ensure your victory in this crazy year of 2022. My, my, my. Began sharing about the covenant, the promise, mm -hmm. that those who know the Lord, yes. those that have been delivered from the kingdom of darkness mm -hmm. and been translated supernaturally into the kingdom of God. Yes. Those of you that say that's part of what I'm about, you have a covenant with God. You have a covenant with God. And we were reminded that a covenant is a contract or an agreement between two or more parties. Where someone makes an offer and someone else accepts the offer. And to violate the agreement once those conditions are met or fail, failing to do or not to do what you said you would do would place you in a breach of that agreement. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. You would be in breach of your contract. You broke the contract. Broke the contract. Yes, sir. And in most civilized societies today, mm -hmm. you can be sued mm -hmm. for legal damages, for money, for breaching or breaking a valid contract. So Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Church family, God offered Christ to the world. And Jesus became the propitiation or the sacrifice for our sin and our sins. Think about this. When you receive Christ as your personal savior, he forgave you of your sin and every sin that you might commit from that point forward. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain on my soul. But Jesus washed it. White as snow. So Christ was the offer. Some of us have accepted that offer. CLOs not only accepted the offer, but confirmed it publicly this morning. Oh, yes, she did. Under tough, under tough circumstances. If you're an 18-year-old girl in today's world, it's tough to do what she did. But many have rejected the offer. That's right. But those who have accepted Christ, they are in a covenant with God yes. that includes uh -huh. if just serving God and avoiding all the craziness by living the way of Christ in this life, if that wasn't enough, God put on it as a fringe benefit uh -huh. 
the promise of eternal life. And understand this, because when we say that, many people think about the future. But if you know the Lord this morning, you have life eternal right now. Right this moment. Now, under the old covenant in the Old Testament, days in the days of Abraham to break a covenant, to break this agreement that we're talking about, usually meant that blood would have to be shed. Because these covenants back then were sealed by some kind of blood. Something or even someone would have to die. Because back then these covenants were sealed as part of an elaborate ceremony between the families and the shedding of blood was always involved. The spilling of blood was used to confirm the agreement. We were also reminded in part one of this teaching that there were conditional and unconditional covenants. Unconditional covenants were made with no strings attached. Now, I, I, I've never done one of those. All my, all my agreements and most of yours had strings attached. Amen. But unconditionals were made with no strings attached and would be kept or made right even if one of the parties involved violated or breached the agreement. And in most cases, in the Old Testament, if someone violated the covenant, blood once again would have to be shed. My Lord, aren't you glad you're living under a new covenant? Amen. 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 That you're not in the Old Testament. The Bible says that those of us in this New Testament dispensation, we are living under a new covenant with better promises and that it's a better covenant and it was sealed with the blood of Christ himself. The blood of Christ Yeshua. Somebody should shout amen. amen. A better covenant. A better covenant with better promises than even what Abraham had. So Israel had an unconditional covenant with God. And regardless of whether Israel was obedient or not, God would keep God's part yes. of the agreement. Mm -mm -mm. They might have to suffer. They might be delayed. They might have to go through things God never intended for them to have to go through because of disobedience. But at the end of the day, somehow, some way, through hell or high water, even if God had to perform a miracle, even if God had to roll back the Red Sea so those children of Israel could walk on dry sod, even if he had to do that. And in our lives, when you miss the mark, Well, you don't do what you promised to do. But you're saved by his power divine. Saved. You have peace sublime. That's what we say. Then we say life now is sweet, and my joy is complete, because I'm saved, saved, that's, that's what, that's, that's the song we sing. But we mess up. We miss the mark. We don't do what we said we were going to do. But if you were really saved, God doesn't kick you to the curb. 
didn't kick the children of Israel to the curb. Right, no, he did. And if somehow, even in the midst of that, if you just stick with God, the Lord will bring you out of your wilderness. He'll bring you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Even when it, it is us that were the ones that messed up. Say amen if you believe that. And so the children of Israel wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. Think about it. This trips me out. I just can't imagine not doing something that would, sh that would keep my journey on schedule. They wandered 40 years in the wilderness because of disobedience to the covenant they had with God. This should have been an 11 day journey. It took them 40 years because they didn't do their part because they didn't do what they said they would do, because they abandoned God. But even in the midst of that, they yet had an unconditional covenant with Jehovah. And instead of God walking away from that agreement, they did eventually find their way into the promised land. Oh yes, they did. That's why there is much wisdom if we follow 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. Uh -huh. This is a deep scripture. There's only one line, uh -huh. but it's deep. And it's, it says that to obey yes. is better than sacrifice. Yes. To obey uh -huh. is better than sacrifice. That, that's significant to me. That's one of the terms of our agreement with God, to obey. Yeah. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Your good works are not enough. That's right. You listening? Yes, your tithes and your offerings are not enough. Your serving on a committee or two uh -huh. ain't enough. Ain't enough. Right. Uh -huh. Your good works in the community uh -huh. is not enough. enough. Yes, our excuses as to why we didn't or why we couldn't are not enough. Not with God, maybe to your sister or your brother, to your cousin, to Shanika and them, but with God, it's not enough. For our God is demanding our obedience. And that same God who loves us beyond our ability to fully comprehend it yes, will allow us to wander yeah. in your wilderness yeah. Yeah. because of an area in our lives where we are in disobedience. But even so, there is nothing Look at somebody and say nothing. nothing. There is nothing that you can do that will separate you from the love of God. Can you say amen? Nothing. Nothing. Because you are in an unconditional covenant with Jehovah. Lord, we don't deserve that kind of agreement with God. We don't deserve that kind of commitment from God. Come on now. We don't deserve that kind of, of allegiance from an all-knowing, all-powerful, omniscient, omnipresent God. So in the time of Abraham, families would enter covenants with another family, usually because one family had a strength where the other family had a weakness. If one family were known to have great warriors mm -hmm. and another family was known for their agricultural or farming skills, mm -hmm. those two families might come together and enter into a covenant agreement mm -hmm. so they could share their strengths yes. and their weaknesses. And by coming together in covenant, it made both families better. Yes. It made both families stronger and it increased their opportunity to survive in a dangerous world. 
So now both parties would be dependent upon one another. And no one family could dominate that relationships. Lord, I could preach on that until, until December. <laughs> Everyone brought something of value to the covenant. And now they were no longer two separate families. But now they were one. And had everything in common. So the families and the members of those families who brought themselves under authority of that agreement because every family member didn't want to be involved necessarily. You had to submit to authority to be a party to the agreement to keep the terms of the agreement that you might be able to get the benefits of that agreement. You had to submit to that authority. But everybody may not want to do it. One family member might say, no, I, I, I ain't having nothing to do with that. Yeah. And go wander off into the wilderness yeah. to fend for themselves. Yeah. Church folk like that. Yes, they don't want to be under the agreement. Jesus. They don't want to be under authority. They want to be an entity unto themselves and wander out into the wilderness. But these families came together and they were agreement, no dominant personalities. They were sharing all that they had. And the blessing of Jehovah was on their life. But to all that would, if one family member had something to eat, that meant the other family member had something to eat. You listening to me? We're heading into that kind of a world. If one family was blessed with more, they would gladly share what they had with the other family. Why? Because they are in covenant with each other. And they had all things in common. And as a result, both families would find that because of being in covenant together, they end up having more than enough. We serve a God that's a more than enough God today. He's a more than enough God. He doesn't have a shortage in his coffers. He's an abundant God. Now there was a great ceremony and formalities in the way these families entered into these covenants, these agreements, these uh, formal ceremony around uh, this coming together. It would be done in an environment that these families would never be able to forget. The two families would choose the family member that best represented the strength of that family, what that family was known for. They would labor over the details, the terms, the conditions of the agreement, what each family was willing to commit to. They debated over what they were promising to one another. Then they prayed and finalized the terms of the agreement with the leadership of each member of that family. Then the chosen representatives from each family would choose a place to do what was referred to as the cutting of the covenant. The cutting of the covenant. This was a sacred, solemn ceremony where the two representatives exchanged their coats, exchanged their garments, that outward apparel that represented who that family was. They exchanged that which represented what they were known for. Organizations like Shriners, Knights of Columbus, Elks, the military, all the ceremony and pledges made in organizations like those have this, their historical and biblical roots in these cutting the covenant ceremonies. The representatives of each family would exchange their coats, which sig signified the mutual exchange of authority. This mutual exchange of coats, garments, was like saying, all that I do, and all that I have is now yours. 
Next, the representatives would exchange their weapons. Through this, they were saying, my strength is now your strength. Your enemies are now my enemies. It's interesting that God entered into a very similar agreement that's, that was prophesied through the prophet Malachi, and we say it oftentimes on First Sunday when we go through the communion liturgy where God, and he says it also in the book of Deuteronomy, which relates to uh, the communion and the covenant ceremony, where God himself said, I will be an enemy to your enemies. I will be a devourer to those that would attempt to devour you if you make a choice and enter into covenant with me. If you'll do it. If you'll do it. And after the exchange of coats, and weapons, then came the walk of blood. In the middle of this arena where they would do this ceremony in open air, where all these families, the two families, have gathered, three large animals, usually oxen, would be sacrificed. These were the covenant animals. Their carcasses would be split right down the center of their spine, and their halves would be placed on the ground opposite each other. The smell of blood, the smell of sinew, decomposed food, or whatever those animals had eaten over the last week, filled the air, filled the arena. You could smell that blood and that decomposition everywhere. And it would leave an everlasting impression on everyone who was there. It would be something that these families would never, ever forget. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? How can I forget? This would be something you would never forget. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. I'm feeling that right now. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. I remember how I was before I wasn't free. It was a mess. <laughs> Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. There would be no forgetting. There would be no convenient. I forgot the covenant. I forgot the terms. I didn't remember what they said. There would be no slipping the ring off your finger because you're in the club tonight and you're trying to catch. You ain't forgetting this covenant. I don't care, it is Friday night and everybody in here is fine. This day, there would be no forgetting the promises being made in the blood spilled that day. The result of the killing of those animals that day, the sacrifice resulted in what was referred to as the trail of blood between the halves of the two animals and a path referred to as the way of blood. And the two representatives, would, they would walk through this way of blood, blood up 
to their ankles, up to their calves. They would walk through this wave of blood, stopping in the center of this sinew, of this smell, of this decomposition. Anybody ever smelled blood before? It has a distinction, distinctive smell to it and these two representatives are in the center of this blood up to their calves and they're stopping in the middle of this and in the middle of that blood the two representatives start to make promises to one another start to make agreements with one another pledging their loyalty that could never be broken that could never be broken. And they would swear to uphold these promises before God. And the moment they put God into it, God became a third party in their agreement. It was called the blessing of the covenant. The blessing of the covenant. And finally, they would cut their hands and their wrists. These two representatives. And they would bind their wrists together so one representative's blood theoretically would flow into the other representative's blood and the other representative's blood would flow into the other party. Now I shared this with y'all last time we talked about this, me with my crazy self, I don't know where I got this from but I find something to cut myself with my, my, my little my little alley friends, because I wanted, I wanted to have some blood brothers. I didn't even know how to cut myself right. I'm taking a old rusty piece of nail, trying to get into a vein. I was crazy. But there's semblance of this throughout the world in different organizations. They swear their loyalty one to another, and the families would then join their names together. A permanent sign that they now had become one. Now, I could preach on that. Yes. Now, can I talk about it, babe? All right, listen. My wife uses her business name for good reasons business reason, and y'all, oh, I'm outside the camera. And I'm trying to do like old church. And, and, and some of y'all, y'all add my name to it, because I think you just feel that's what is appropriate. But back then, there was none of that kind of stuff. Y'all became one, not only in the reality of it spiritually, but also in the outward appearance. Yes. And finally, these two families, they ate a covenant meal of bread and wine. And what we're about to do is very symbolic of that. Yes. Very similar to what Christ would do with his disciples. Christ Yeshua became that covenant animal. We sang the song that they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head until he died. That's love. He became our covenant animal some 2,000 years ago. The song says that he died for us and shed great blood as a part of the process, almost exactly mimicking what was done in the Old Testament days. He became the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. For he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes, yes. He was bruised yes. for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and because of his stripes, because of what he went through for you. We're not trying to be healed. We are healed. We are healed. 
we are healed. And as Christ was hanging on the cross, on his way down Golgotha, he was making promises to you and to me. He made them, bleeding to death, down that road, carrying an 11 by 11 foot cross. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you even unto the end of the world. You may not keep this agreement, but I will. I will. This is unconditional. It's not relying on what you do. It's relying on what I'm promising you. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? I don't need you to keep my promise. But there's great benefit if you do. Yes, sir. Great benefit if you do. Yes. Thank you. Our Lord shed blood, yes. made promises to you uh -huh. and to me yes. that our God will never break. Yes. And as we prepare for the sacrament of holy communion, understand yes. this. Yes. Huh. We're living in a period of time where you're going to need, you're oh, going to yeah. need to know, you're going to need to be established on the reality that you serve a God that will not leave you alone, that will take care of you. No matter what you see on the television or hear on the news, that God is not going to remit or walk away from his agreement with his people. I don't care what forces might come up against you. I don't care what you're going through now. God is there. And he will not leave you. And if you just stick to your guns, if you just hold on just a little bit longer, just a little bit more, just one more day, God will show up in your situation and deliver you in a way that you did not think was possible. That's the God we serve. But you have to hold on. You can't quit. You can't give up. You might give in, but don't give up. For our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Look at somebody said, our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. And when you least expect it, listen, listen, listen. I keep preaching to y'all. I don't know how many of y'all believe it. But I'm saying, I, I'm not looking for chaos. But the word of the Lord that's come to me is that as things get more chaotic, I'm coming through. I'm getting closer. Your deliverance draweth nigh. Because of what's gone in the earth, the more chaos there is, the closer I am. And I'm about to show up in a way that this world has never seen before. Now, all I ask of you, when you see this go down, you just say, oh, yeah, my pastor's been talking about this for, yeah, my pastor said it, yeah. oh, we've we been knowing about this. Lord have mercy. Yes. Have your way, oh God. This is truth have your way. that you need to establish in your heart yes, sir. Yes, sir. to be victorious when all hell is breaking loose Ooh. around you. As we share in the sacrament of Holy Communion, a sacred, sacred time and a sacred, sacred moment in our church. It's a moment that the founders of this church, as I've shared with you, believe that the presence of God manifested itself in a special, unique way. This whole communion is a gift that Christ left with us. And we could do this every day if we want to, but he said as often as you do it, 
didn't say he had to do it on just first Sunday. And we, we put those kind of limits on it. But he yeah. said, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Another way he could have said that is as often as you do this, remember the covenant. Remember our agreement. Remember what I promised. It's unconditional. I pray that you're obedient to it, but I will not walk away from it. We thank you for our communion steward being on station. Amen. Sister Sandy, starting with the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and seek to grow into his likeness. Let us draw near with faith, make our humble confession, and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. Mm -hmm. And you'll have to repeat part of this after me. We do not presume to come. We do not presume to come. To this your table, merciful Lord. To this your table, merciful Lord. Trusting in our own goodness. Trusting in our own goodness. But in your unfailing mercies. But in your unfailing mercies. We are not worthy. We are not worthy. That you should receive us. That you should receive us. But give your word. But give your word. And we shall be healed. And we shall be healed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That is proof of God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Those of you online or watching this on YouTube, if you grab a cracker or some juice, I will consecrate the, those elements so you may go forward in the rest of this liturgy with us. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You made us in your image to love and be loved. When we turned away and our love fell, your love remained steadfast. By the suffering, death, and resurrection of your only Son, Jesus Christ, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Yes. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Can we all recite the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou art the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, if you take that cracker or that wafer that represents the body of our Lord, this is the body of Christ that was broken for us. Take and eat.
Without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission for our sin. The blood of Jesus that was shed for us, take and drink. Most bountiful God, we give you thanks for the world you have created. For the gift of life and for giving yourself to us, Jesus Christ, whose holy life, suffering and death and glorious resurrection have delivered us from slavery to sin and death. We thank you that in the power of your Holy Spirit, you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. We are your children, and yours is the glory now and forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, let everybody say amen. amen. As Sister Lorraine comes and helped me sing this, let's sing, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day, Lord, he died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Oh, one day, one day. bless you. Enjoy and make sure you have a safe Labor Day. Let's remember to keep Brother Jimmy Blackson yeah. in prayer. Amen. Those among us that are traveling over this weekend, when you just think about traveling, just mm. pray for the Dale and Lee Haven congregation. Yes. Let's remember our new young church members, Cielo Robinson and the Robinson family. Amen. Amen. My, my, my. There is a God somewhere. Yes, there is. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Yes. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Yes. And to keep you in the presence of his glory. Yes. With exceeding joy. Yes. To the only wise God, our Savior. 
be glory and majesty both now and forevermore. I just thought about that benediction. I've been saying that pretty much for eight years. And I just, something just hit me about those words. Yes. Is able to keep you from falling, my Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. God bless you. Enjoy your weekend.